<laughs> James, how was the uh, energy execution of practice today? It was really good. Uh, I, I think we've had the two best days of special teams practice that since we've been here. I think it's been really, really good. Um, I felt really good about yesterday's energy and execution. We got some new things in, so it wasn't as clean as you'd like it to be, but that's typical on a Tuesday. I thought today, you know, uh, just being out here, not watching the film yet, but I thought, I thought, you know, I was really pleased with with uh, with how we practiced. Um, I don't see as much of the defense as I as I do the offense, just because how I break practice up. Um, but feedback from Brent from the peers, I wa I wasn't over there. It was it was good as well. So. Um, I like I like where we're at right now. We got we got to finish the week off the right way. But right now, I think from a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday preparation standpoint, I like where we're at. Coach, from game day, what impact have you seen from game day and trying to eliminate distractions? Are you guys watching after practice? Are you pushing that? None. That's that's for the community. That's for the students. Um, that's for Coach Corso. That's that's for all that stuff. That's, that's not for us. Um, we'll be at the team hotel. Um, that's that's not for us. We'll we'll be in meetings. Um, that's not for us. I think I have to go over for a period of time, but that that's not for us. And we talked about that early in the in the week. You know, the guys have earned it. Uh, all these things, and and it's not like we stick our head in the sand and act like it's not going on. It's going on, um, but. You know, the whiteout, awesome. But our focus is on our preparation, our normal week of preparation. Uh, game day, awesome. Our SOP, our standard operating procedure. Um, rankings, awesome. But all we're worried about is being 1-0 this week. So I addressed that with the guys on Sunday. I feel like the staff is locked in. I feel like the, the players are locked in. Uh, we got a really good opponent coming to town. Got great history and tradition, just like we do. Um, you know, it should be it should be a heck of a game. Coach, you think the Michigan right game here really talked about a lot. Just how they run the ball, the sets they use you know, behind the fullback and point line, then the backs. I mean, Green Hague didn't have a big game last week, but then they have they had Chris Evans and Ty Isaac, a little different type of runners. Yep, they've recruited really well. So as we know, they got a lot of talent. Um, you know, last week, like you mentioned, got running back go for 200 yards. Um, they are they are. Stanford-esque, they are Michigan State. Um, you know, they're they're one of those style of offenses where they're going to be multiple formation, multiple personnel groups, multiple shift and motion, and you know they're going to run power, they're going to run lead, they're going to run counter. Um, you know, they're going to try to run the ball down your throat, play action pass, play great defense, play really good situational football. And you know, try to get their field goal kicker in range to make field goals if they're not scoring touchdowns. I mean, they're they're what I would describe a traditional Big Ten style of, of offense. Hey James, a little number here. You have many sacks in the last three weeks as you did in 13 games before that combined. Does that concern you? Say that again. You have 14 sacks the last three games. That's as many. So actually, you're talking about our offense. Your right? offense, yeah. Your defense, yeah, sorry. Said it. Uh, that you had for the 13 games before that combined. Is that concerning? And how do you address that? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, whenever we give up more sacks in a game than we get, that we didn't, we didn't, we didn't meet one of our objectives. So yeah, there's, there's no doubt about it. I think, um, you know, that's been a conversation for the early part of the season. Uh, you know, we got to run the ball better, and we got to protect better uh, consistently. You know, I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think there's some things that we're doing this week that will help with that. Um, but yeah, we, we always want to you know reduce sacks. We all always want to get as many as we possibly can. Um, as you as you imagine, like most problems in life, it's not as simple as one thing. It's a combination of factors that go into it. But uh, but I see us improving, uh, you know, just like we are at every single position from techniques, from a fundamental standpoint, some things we're going to do scheme-wise to help out with that as well. You know, I, I think we all know the game of football is won and lost up front. Uh, people invest a lot of time and energy um, in recruiting great defensive linemen, uh, especially guys on the edge. Um, and, and, and we try to do the same thing. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the game of football, you know, that I've known my career, but I've also learned very well 
you know, getting here after after what we walked into. So um, it's it's a challenge for everybody. And what's your relationship like with Jim Harbaugh? You guys have been, both been in it for a pretty long time. You recruit a lot of the same areas. You, you know, you see each other at the end of the days, that sort of thing. I don't know him very well. Um, interact, like you're saying, at Big Ten Media Days and somewhat recruiting. Um, uh, got a lot of respect for him. Obviously, he's been very successful all the places he's been, San Diego, uh, Michigan, um, Stanford, 49ers, you know, Michigan. Um, so got a lot of respect for him. I know a bunch of guys on the staff. Uh, Pep Hamilton, I know all the way back from when I was at Maryland, he was at Howard. I go way back with him, a bunch of guys. So um, got a lot of respect for him, um, but I, I don't know him personally. Uh, very well. I, I I think he's fascinating. You know, he's an interesting guy, um, but I don't know him very well. A lot of respect for his success and, and uh, you know what he's been able to do as a player and as a coach. Have we ever see you guys take a spring break trip like that? You know, like Rome. what? Rome last year. With them or, or on no, them. like on your own, not <laughs> together. No. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I, that's probably a conversation kind of for the off season. Mm -hmm. Uh, caravans or something like that. I want I want to focus on this game and, and not uh, spring break trips. Um, you know, there's some philosophical um, arguments in both direction for that. There really is. Um, uh, there's financial implications. There's there's a lot of things as you can imagine. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably rather talk about that as at a caravan stop or um, some other media. I'll file it in the notebook. I thought you meant like us going together, like a, <laughs> I mean, maybe a I joint know. family vacation. Yeah, I'll start the Kickstarter for that. Uh, I do have a question for you, though. You talked about patience and self scouting. Um, what are the parameters for taking things out of the playbook and adding things in? I mean, obviously, there's things that you believe that you've got to be good at to win, but for kind of a drastic example, if you run a triple reverse and it doesn't work, you don't need to do that many times to kind of get the idea that maybe that's not a play that you want in the book. How do you how do you come to those decisions over the course of the season? Yeah, I, I, I probably phrase it a little bit different than you just did. Things don't leave the playbook. You know, the playbook, um, basically anything you've ever run is in the playbook. And then when you need it, you can go to it. And you got video playbook, and then you have the written materials as well. I think what you're referencing is more is the game plan. What what makes the game plan and what is removed from the game plan? Am I right there? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you're looking for you know angles and leverage. You're always looking for plays that you have a leverage um, advantage, an angle advantage, uh, where you can create space and green grass um, on offense. Obviously, defensively, you're trying to do the opposite. Uh, you're trying on offense to run what I would say is downhill where you got a numbers advantage compared to uphill, you know, into bad angles or bad numbers. Um, and on defense, you're trying to do the complete opposite. Um, so the, the playbook is based on that, or the game plan is based on that. What plays do you think give you the best advantage and put your players in the best position to be successful and gain those things? Um, and also, where do you eliminate? I think the hard part that I think we're doing a pretty good job of is you can come up with 125 plays like that, but you can't get them all practiced versus all the looks. And I think that's the hard part between a young coach or an inexperienced coach and a veteran coach is the art of what is that fine line of balance that you have enough in the game plan that you're not predictable and keep the defense or the offense kind of uh, you know off balance um, and that's that's the fine line what is that what is that number and obviously with a more experienced offense the bigger that number can be I'd also make the argument kind of an old coaching philosophy is the more complex the defense you go against then the less you want to do. The more vanilla the defense is, then the more complex you can be on offense. So you have to balance all those things into, into what you're doing. And you know we got a veteran coaching staff and we got a veteran team now, so you can do more of that. That's where the challenges come. When you got a young and experienced team, 
you think you would want to be more complex to try to help those guys gain an advantage, but you can't. So that's where the challenge comes, you know. Um, so I, I hope I answered. That's a good question. Time for two more. James, along with the key game this weekend, that's a really a primary are they new opportunity. Glasses? What's that? They do glasses. Are they new, are they dimming on me? Are they, they, they <laughs> when the light hits them, yeah, my wife just made fun. They're, they're new. My wife has made fun of me. <laughs> and they're, they're the tinted ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I said I'll get transitions, and now you know. I did the transitions too. <laughs> Didn't go well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I beat up by the players, by <laughs> fans, by opposing fans. So that's why, like, you guys always ask, like, that guy that's with me all the time with the Gatorade and the markers and the towel. That's the other thing he does is changing from the glasses to the sunglasses where the transitions are so much more efficient and easier. Yeah, they're just it's not just a not a good I look. need one it's of your guys. like yeah. a played out dad deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. Well, yeah. They look great on you. Thank you. <laughs> Mark, thank you. Uh, well, getting back to, to you know big game, but also a major showcase opportunity for the recruiting efforts. How do you balance as a staff getting ready for this game, but also the logistics of, of hosting so many recruits yeah. and, and how do you maximize the opportunity? Yeah, it's a it's a organizational nightmare because you don't want to say no to anybody, but how do you make sure that all these kids that come have a good experience? Because here, here's the other deal. If you come and then you don't have the manpower to show them the attention, then it can backfire on you. And I think that's where a lot of people don't understand football and staff sizes. That, that's, that's why you have the numbers that you have. Because when you're gonna sign a class of 25 guys in a class, I'm just using that as an example, you have to recruit in the starting point, maybe 250 kids to get to that 25. So how do you manage all of that when we're at the game? Who's making sure that the kid that got stuck in traffic that shows up late that can't get into the game and is managing that issue or don't know where to park or it's a nightmare. So that's where you see these staff sizes is to manage all of that. It is, it is a challenge. It is really a challenge. Um, or the kid who you're recruiting who wants to bring three of his teammates and typically we could probably accommodate that, but this game we can't. You know, so there's a lot of things that go into it. Families, that's the other issue right now with the official visits. I get it why we changed the rules and moved the official visits up, but that's a problem. Like this summer, we're gonna be doing camp while official visits are going on. So you gotta have the staff to be able to run camp and we can't hire high school coaches anymore. And then you gotta have people to entertain the families and be able to show them the campus and set up the academic meetings. So in some ways, by us moving the official visits up and changing the rule that we can't hire high school coaches anymore, you've just made the argument to make the staffs bigger, which I know every AD and commissioner now is like watching this video and uncomfortable with what I said, but that's the problem is every, every time you make one of these decisions to change things, there's a there's an opposite effect as well you know so there are the challenges with it you know and it's like I tell you guys I'm on, I'm on vacation and the number one quarterback in the country calls and says that he wants to come visit Penn State what am I gonna say well I'm on vacation come back two weeks from now no I'm flying back so that's where that's where it's a challenging deal because you're never really off in college football. In the pros, you're off. When you're off, you're off. You go home with your family, they go home with their family, they're not calling you. College players aren't saying, hey, I'm in town with the Green Bay Packers, can I come visit? <laughs> you're off. And that's the advantage of that. So I'm not saying I have the answer, but it's tricky. Everybody wants to deregulate or change the rules or do this and do that. There's consequences to it. One more. What is your current approach to uh, social media and how has it evolved throughout your You know, I'm not a huge social media fan. I embrace it and accept it because I think it's part of the job and it allows me to connect. Um, I do think home games, I'm going to be different on Twitter than I am away games because I'm trying to create the best atmosphere in college football because I know that's going to equate to winning. 
that's going to help winning. It, it's there's no doubt about it. It affects um, it affects the opportunities to be successful. So whatever I can do to help with that, I'm going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, when it comes to home games, typically I am a. Uh, they make a they make a quote and I'll tweet it out with a we are or I see someone else that has done something and I retweet it and that's really it. Um, I do monitor my players um, and I have staff to do that as well. Um, that's usually about the extent of it, but I also um, think that I also have a responsibility to promote Penn State football, the brand, um, and. You know, when I think we can expand the whiteout more than just the stadium and get all the bars downtown and all the restaurants and the schools and the businesses and Roth Rock and uh, Happy Valley Brewery and get all them people to white it out as well and then get all the watch parties across the country to white it out as well, it's pretty cool. The whole state of Pennsylvania, white it out. So, so we can take what we have that's special in that stadium and grow it. And that's what we're trying to do with every aspect of our program is to grow it. Um, and people say, well, I don't have something white. You have bleach. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, it's, 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 it's something I think is already really special, but I think it, it can get even bigger. I really, I really do. I, you know, I even talked to, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, I even talked to a local high school coach that when they have home games, the same weekend we're having a home game, can they can they have a white out? That would be pretty cool. You know, so you know, let, let's let's grow this thing. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.